Okay, people on Zoom, we are recording this because we are going to put it on YouTube. We have a lot of parents who can't join us, so they've requested the Zoom option. So you probably got a notification that just says, like, are you okay to record? Um, so that is what's going on. Can everybody on Zoom hear us okay? Yep. Awesome. Thank you. Fabulous. <laughs> Okay, there's three people here in person, so we'll kind of divvy our attention between looking at the cameras and looking at the three of you as well. So just briefly starting off with quick intros. Some parents probably already know me. I'm Rachel. I got gross. I work here and I'm also going to school for clinical mental health at St. Cloud State, along with my classmates. So you can introduce me. I'm Amy. Hello, um, I'm Amy. And I'm Chloe. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> So these are two of my awesome classmates. We're missing a third one, Alyssa, who did do one of the presentations with us. She works in another job and could not be here. Hi, Katie. Your audience still connecting, but hi, welcome. So uh, we are keeping this like really very loosely structured because we sent out the slideshows that you all should have received. We had created three different slideshows. So we did one presentation with of talking about eating disorders and body image that was open to junior seniors. We did have some younger classmen come, but no middle schoolers. Um, and so that was a really good group. We were really just hoping for like five students and we had a roughly 20. So we have to thank the NHS students, Sarah, Kylie, and Kira for really trying to initiate something for mental health awareness month, which is May. So. We had a great conversation about eating disorders, body image, stuff like that. And then the next week we talked about stress, briefly talked about like, what is anxiety? What is depression? The importance of sleep. You'll see on both, all three presentations, we have like the myths of mental health or the myths of stress, eating disorders, specific things. Um, and that's just kind of to break down some of those stereotypes. So, and then on Monday, Amy and I got up super early, 6.30 a.m., and spoke with the softball team and talked to that group. So then we did get to talk to a few middle schoolers because they do have 7th and 8th graders on their starting varsity team. And that was a really great conversation that was about an hour long. And that was kind of a combination of all of the topics, briefly touching on all of them. So that's a quick overview. The final document that you received is all of the questions. So we had students submit anonymous questions via note card. Um, they could obviously opt out of the questions as well, but they asked 30 plus questions. And as you can see, your students are asking really fantastic questions about mental health. And so we, along with the school counselors here at Cathedral, so we wanna thank Bridget and Mary specifically for contributing to those questions. They helped us answer those questions as well. So your students received these questions as well. And then for the eating disorder group, we started off this session by doing this activity. And for the stress group, we started it off by doing this activity called You Are Not Alone. And so once again, anonymous note cards were passed out for the eating disorder conversation. It was about like, what's something you're self-conscious with your body or with eating or that stresses you out around that topic. And the other one was like, what's stressing you out right now? And we read them out loud to kind of do it as an icebreaker. Once again, all anonymous, but it's to demonstrate and to create that trust with people and to also demonstrate to your students or children that they're not alone in their mental health. There were so many repetitions of like my stomach isn't flat enough, or I'm self-conscious about my legs, or I'm stressed about track or school or moving away to college. Mm -hmm. And so it was very reassuring for the students, but we took all of those submissions of things I'm anxious about and sent them out. So if you're anxious about legs, you'll go over and it's a positive affirmation. And so it's a therapy technique used with cognitive behavioral therapy, also known as CBT, which is actually a theory that Chloe practices the most. Mm -hmm. And it's called reframing. Do you want to briefly talk about reframing and why it's important? Yeah, I can do a little bit. So basically the gist of like a reframe is kind of to take a negative or unhelpful thought that you are having and to kind of change it to 
be a little bit more positive or more helpful to you. Um, so like one, for example, one of the activities that we did that Rachel was briefly mentioning was um, doing reframes related to like an insecurity. So um, like an example of that would be like if somebody's we were insecure about their legs, we were trying to shift it to give them um, a different perspective to take about that. Um, more of like a gratitude of like, well, okay, maybe I am insecure about my legs, but on the other side of the story, like my legs are very helpful. My legs get me to where I want to go. <laughs> I'm grateful for my legs. And so that positive um, reframe. Awesome. Thanks, Chloe. So that's like briefly kind of, I just wanted to give all of the parents on here and in person, just a brief overview of the three points that we've kind of interacted with your students. And we were all, I mean, I knew the students were going to be great. I love the Cathedral students. I wasn't surprised, but my classmates definitely were like, wow, they have great questions. Yeah. They participated <laughs> so well, and they were so respectful of each other and the classmates. We did only have female women, like women, girls attend the session, which goes to the stereotype that like men don't talk about, deal with mental health, that men don't deal with, have like eating disorders, which is one of the myths that we talk about in the slideshow. It's not true. Um, but so that was kind of the only thing that probably is a little bit of a disappointment, but also not surprising. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, overall, really great conversations were had, but we really wanted to offer this hour to each of you um, to answer any questions you have about your students or just grade specific questions dealing with mental health. I know you all have access to our awesome school counselors, but we come from just a general clinical mental health background and each of us have 40 plus hours working with real clients. And so we do have hands-on experience working with counselors as well. So yeah, we kind of just wanted to open it up to questions, any questions you have about mental health, mental health at Cathedral, mental health in your students. You can always go through the questions as well, but there are some like very specific questions. So we just wanted to kind of open it up to all of you. Amy, did you have anything to add? Sorry, I was doing a lot of the recap. Yeah, you, you summed it up really well. So. <laughs> Oh, anything I did actually. Oh, Chloe has something. one other thing before we jump to the questions that I want to talk about. Um, so we did that like reframe worksheet, but there's also like coping strategies that were taught to students. Mm -hmm. Like if they were feeling really stressed out, like some techniques that they could use. They're in the PowerPoint, but there's like a grounding um exercise, I think a breathing exercise mm -hmm. that were taught that can help um with stress. So um mm -hmm. those resources are there as well, just so you are all are all aware of that. Awesome. Once again, we didn't want to like go through the presentation because you can all read. There's <laughs> um, a lot of information. <laughs> and there's a lot of information. And yeah. so we really wanted this to be very like discussion. We want to answer your specific questions you have about mental health, not just like talk generally about like the definition from the DSM of what anxiety is. Yeah, we did provide you with those resources. So, and we will send up a follow up email that includes like clinical mental health resources as mm -hmm. well, like uh, the emergency suicide hotline number and eating disorder numbers and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. yeah, now we can open up the floor for questions. <laughs> I'm gonna get a dog in the floor. Hello. <laughs> yeah. Parents in person, do you have any questions? I just am curious. What did you find? Um, like, what were the top issues at our work? Like, I've just heard through parent council meetings that mental health is really bad here, or there are a lot of issues. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. you had to name like the top three generally. Like, are there? ones that really stand out amongst our students or ones that are different here maybe compared to generally yeah. you know, public that are like <laughs> cathedral specific? Awesome. Great question. So just recapping, I don't know if you all on Zoom could hear, but the question was, what were the top three big concerns that students voiced mental health related and do they differ from what we know about the general population with adolescents? Mm -hmm. 
start the next question? Do you want me to? Sorry. Oh, you were only on one. That's right. Okay, so uh, we'll take team. Um, and the softball, that was the one that Amy was at. So we all kind of like popped into a few. I was the one who was at every single one. Um, so I'll start and then they can contribute. Mm -hmm. It was nice for Amy to be at the other one because we were able to access the middle schoolers as well, mm -hmm. which we know the middle schoolers are having some behavioral issues. And so we couldn't really speak to that as much. So we were much more focused on the high schoolers. So I think they're pretty in line answering the second part of your question. They're in line with a lot of struggles you're seeing and are common in adolescence, common in the sense that like, unfortunately, mental health is very common and most people deal with some variation of mental health. So you're seeing a lot of like stress just in general. Um, I was actually surprised by how low their stress levels were when we did the like, we did this pie chart activity and you chart out your day and then you talk, you put stars next to the three activities that are causing you the most stress. And your daughter, for example, was like, I'm actually not stressed at all. And when I am stressed, I just tell myself not to be stressed. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so I was actually surprised by how stress was not one of the biggest issues. I think the eating disorder conversation was the most, um, yeah. but also in line with what I expected high schoolers to be dealing with. Uh, we had a very deep, good conversation on eating disorders, but I was also really impressed by just the the questions your students submitted. Um, there were questions about PTSD and self-harm. And so your students are really thinking about these um, more challenging mental health topics like suicide awareness and PTSD, which stands for post-traumatic stress disorder. So mm -hmm. I would say the biggest one was the eating disorders, just the when we did the you are not alone activity there were a lot of like areas where they were self-conscious and a lot of similar areas. So that was the biggest thing I noticed. Um, Chloe, do you have any thoughts? Yeah, no, I would totally agree with what Rachel said. Um, it definitely seems like um, concerns about body image were definitely up there as like one of the big things um, I did. Just from like seeing the questions that students submitted, it seemed like there were questions about like anxiety, depression, um and like talking to parents about those things that was a, definitely a big concern too was like how to initiate a conversation with a parent about these mm -hmm. um topics um so it really like ranged from student to student but I would say in general the concerns were fairly consistent with like the data in general about what adolescents are struggling with depression body image eating problems um anxiety stress yeah mm -hmm. those all seem to be like the bigger concerns mm -hmm. and chloe brings up a good point we did have so these there were repeats of some of the questions we obviously didn't put them in multiple times i think there were about four note cards turned in that had something to do with how do i ask my mom how do i ask my parent that I want to go to therapy or how do I mention that I think starting therapy again would be helpful mm -hmm. and so we did try to address that and these questions were also sent out to your students just because we did not have time we had 10 plus questions for every session so we didn't have time to address the questions in person with your students so we did send them out um, and we included like a talking script for like how to approach asking your parents to go back to therapy but i think that was one of the most submitted questions do you think that answers your question do you have any follow-ups okay we had a typed up question all right the question was kelly were any students open in sharing if they are already experiencing mental health counseling if they have already experienced mental health counseling um no no student was like, I go to therapy currently. Based on some of the questions, you can tell that they have gone to therapy um, or that they, like one of the questions was like, how do I tell my mom that I wanna go back to therapy? So that implies that I probably once went to therapy, mm -hmm. but we really tried to keep a lot of it anonymous. We also, oh, sorry. No, I was gonna say, we also didn't specifically ask that question to yeah. students if they had gone to counseling in the past or not. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, sorry, go yeah. ahead. Um, but yeah, so 
a lot of the questions also were like, how do I get diagnosed with anxiety or depression without seeing a psychiatrist? So it was kind of that like, I don't want to go see someone for mental health, or maybe they're nervous about going to see someone. Mm -hmm. And so we did address those questions as well. The only thing we didn't really spend any time talking about is the difference between a counselor, psychiatrist, a psychologist, um, because that felt a little like nitty gritty, but there are differences. Mm -hmm. Do you have something to add? Yeah, I wanted to share that um, in regards to like the confidentiality of the students um, and why we kept it very anonymous with a lot of uh, note cards and things like that was because all of these students also go to school every day together. Um, it's not a closed off group therapy. Um, and so we really wanted to make sure that if someone was a little more self-conscious about the fact that they see therapy, that they weren't sharing that information with the students around them that they might see in the second half or um, anything like that. And so that was very intentional that we kept it very anonymous on what the students were all handing in and that we could look at their um, responses before reading them out loud or um, sharing that information with everyone. Um, so it was very, um, on purpose that yep. we did it that way. <laughs> yeah, and another piece of that too is like there is a lot of stigma surrounding the topic of mental health and it can be really an uncomfortable conversation especially for teenagers to have to navigate. I mean like this is we're all going to school for this but it can still be a hard conversation to have with people sometimes because it can be really heavy and so um, having that anonymity was really a way for students to just be able to like submit questions without necessarily like like outing themselves who it was and then potentially even ask some harder <laughs> questions that they might not have been or felt comfortable asking mm -hmm. so um and to that point and then we'll get to you and I see your hand up um I just also have to credit your children and your students I was so impressed by how many questions I think the second most popular question was like how do I talk to my friend if I notice they're struggling mm -hmm. with anxiety, with depression, with an eating disorder? So your students, at least the ones who attended, really do care a lot for their classmates as well yeah. and want to be supportive people and friends and all of that. So credit to raising good kids. But yeah. <laughs> um, all right. And you had a question. Uh Good afternoon, I guess. Um, thank you very much for having this um, gathering. Um, I think it's a very important topic. And um, good luck with your studies as you pursue your final degrees. Um, I am ever so grateful that my daughter has the opportunity to be at Cathedral to grow in these um, very um, impactful years. And I wasn't in right away but I at, like at the start of this I sort of missed the beginning but I'm just wondering I know um that affirmations are um very positive um and I'm wondering how something as simple as an affirmation and the impact of that towards students can really help them through their days and so I'm wondering, um, and I don't know that you can answer this, but how are we going about making sure in the busyness and the high expectations and the driven students that are at Cathedral, that those that um, are struggling and those that are maybe um, just um, going through their daily, daily routine, everyday routine. How are the teachers and the coaches and the administration and even the teachers themselves, how are they implementing affirmations? Because I think that we could have more of that and the impact of a simple affirmation can do so much for a student's self-esteem or their struggle of the day or their questions about their self-image. And um, I would encourage that if there's some way, even through um, T3 um, and some other open times, that there would actually be time for um, more interactions with the students that are authentic and real and 
building a sense of um, companionship and a support group, like something more than what's happening. I can't say anything specific with my daughter's circumstances, but just I have a passion for Cathedral High School and um, a passion for all of the teachers that put in endless hours and the coaches and their commitment to the students are so evident. But I think in our everyday lives, we um, cut ourselves short from being more authentic and real to our students. And so that would be one thing that I would be willing to get involved in or whatever you can, however you can respond to that sort of thing. Awesome. Thank you. Fabulous. Thank you so much, Anne. Um, my brain's kind of going three places first and my classmates can definitely contribute. So the first one, I just want to like briefly touch on, you started off by being like, you've mentioned positive affirmations, kind of like the impact. So I want to talk about different like theoretical approaches to why affirmations work and mm -hmm. the science behind it within your brain. Um, so that's the first, and I'm saying this so I don't forget my thoughts. <laughs> the second one is really speaking to the idea of what you talked about with like, what can Cathedral do? What are we currently doing? And so I can definitely speak to that one more than my classmates can. And, um, and additionally with that, talking about like coaches and also going forward next year, I wanna talk about briefly about my internship. So we have mm -hmm. theory, what Cathedral is currently doing and then next year's plans. So do you wanna talk briefly? I know you briefly mentioned and you hopped on a little late, Anne. So do you briefly wanna talk about how cognitive behavioral therapy how like using your thoughts and cognitions helps to like rewire your brain. Yes. Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. You don't have to go too much into yeah. that if you already have, because I already know what that is. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just to save time. Yeah, for sure. If it's already been mentioned. We just briefly talked about it. Um, yeah. And the reason why I like, we all, have mentioned theory a few times is so different counselors use different theories to approach counseling and that makes a huge difference um a counselor who's grounded in cognitive behavioral therapy like chloe is looks a lot different than someone who's grounded in a more humanistic theory or a theory that's called narrative theory um and they're all great there's no right or wrong and some people like the three of us kind of blend the theories. Mm -hmm. So Chloe kind of spoke about CBT and how using positive affirmations like literally rewires your brain. I the uh, the imagery that I used yesterday when I taught a yoga class actually is the idea that like you're in a field surrounded by wildflowers and you've been treading this path through the field. It's really worn down. But it's a path of like negative thoughts. It's so easy to walk through. You don't touch the weeds. It's awesome to get through, but it's not great for you. It's wearing your body down. It's wearing your mind down. Using positive affirmations, whether it's through CBT approach or narrative approach, which is like restoring your life, you have to step off the path, but then you start to build a new path that's positive and it takes work and it takes time. But the more you reaffirm those positive thoughts, I am worthy, I am beautiful, my legs are strong, stuff like that, the easier your mind jumps to that thought before the others. Well stated. <laughs> yeah, that was really well stated. Yeah. Our brains are so awesome yeah. and mm -hmm. they jump to the easiest conclusion. So mm -hmm. if a friend doesn't respond right away, the easiest thing for your brain to say is, oh, they don't care about me mm -hmm. or, oh, like I don't matter. Mm -hmm. um, but that quickest information is not the best information or the most correct information. And so rewiring <laughs> it, creating those different paths doesn't mean that middle path won't happen. It still can cross and it's still easy to walk um, because that's what our brain wants to do, but it's not the correct or not um, the best mm -hmm. path for us. Yeah, mm -hmm. it'll happen less often. And um, a quote that I really like to share, like with my clients, um, when I'm approaching this topic too, is what you practice grows stronger. Mm -hmm. And so the more that you practice the positivity, the more likely you're able to like jump over there. Yeah. 
And then, so the second part of your question, what cathedral's currently doing, um, the school counselors do a great job. Obviously, there's not that many of them for how many students we have. Wow. And our teachers are grounded and do have background knowledge and like social emotional learning and um, just like general mental health knowledge, especially because it's such a growing topic and the stigma is getting better about talking about it. Did you have something to add, Michelle? Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, yeah, it's not so much a question as this. I wanted to come here to say, and I don't wanna get into it either and I don't want people saying anything about my son, please. But I absolutely love Cathedral. This is our second school. And I want the kids to know that they absolutely can go to the counselors here because they, our son's counselor at least is amazing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely amazing. And for his mental health, I've never seen anything. I don't even want to get emotional about it so much better for him. And I'm like, you should be working at Nystrom or something because it feels so like comfortable, but I don't want her to. But I wonder if all of the students in that school realize that they can go to them. And like there, he says there's a place you can go at school. Like if you need to kind of like decompress or like sit. And I'm like, do, do all the kids know this? You know, because like you said, not everybody wants to say that they have a mental, you know, health thing going on. And mm -hmm. um, I, I think Cathedral in that regard is amazing. And this being our second um, high school, also teacher wise, when I go to conferences, we had a teacher actually notice him and at conferences say, I can tell you know, when he's not having a good day. That made me so appreciative sitting in that um, conference. I was like, thank you. Wow, these teachers are paying attention to the children's mental health in that school. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to be here today just to pat Cathedral on the back mm -hmm. because they are noticing kids with these problems. And so, and it is so hard to find people out there and I'm sure you all know and I'm thankful to you to be doing this major because it is really hard to find good counselors for um minors in the area for therapy um right now it's it's really hard and even I guess for adults it is too to find therapists to get into um you know, like, like bi-weekly or whatever, that isn't a phone conversation where you can actually sit. So that's why I wanted to make sure I was today just to hear what other people were thinking or what was going on in the school. I'm not sure if he was even at one of the events. It's too bad he wasn't. He actually got up and spoke at our church. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, so he was really brave doing that. I don't think he could at the whole school because it's I mean he doesn't have he's making friends slowly where he knows more people at church but that was pretty awesome awesome so, thank you so much for sharing yeah I just I just wanted to let anybody else in here that knows uh you know what I mean that might be wondering and then also for you or just cathedral councils I don't know how we get the word out about that but mm -hmm. I just wanted to say when we figured that out uh, how do they do that and or like you like get to figure that out because this place is a million times better than the last place he was mm -hmm. well I'm so happy to hear that I'm so happy to hear that for your son as well and yeah like you said we do have fantastic school counselors here and so we, we and, do and the teachers like you said they really do know oh. students there are other examples of teachers like pulling a student aside being like hey just want to mm -hmm. do a quick check-in how are you doing mm -hmm. so I think the second part of the question that was asked is like cathedral is doing an excellent job and our ratio hey. student to student student to teacher ratio definitely helps with that too we mm -hmm. you know all the students in cathedral mm -hmm. even if not by name or survive. and so it is easier to do those check-ins um, yeah. and then yeah. Just like 
briefly, because I know I have had your hands raised for a while, but just briefly, the last part of that question. I'm doing an internship here in St. Cloud with someone who has a private practice, like literally <laughs> down the road. For her child is actually, both of her children are here. Her name's Rebecca Kleber. And so I have to do a project with her. And so I'm obviously, I still work here, but I'm doing some mental health work at Cathedral that me, Kathy, and Erin are going to work on, and the school counselors are going to work on over the summer to try to do even like more than what Cathedral is already doing. I would oh. really sit down with all the coaches and because 99% of the time we have great coaches, there are some comments that students will say to me, like, my coach told me I can't have sweets. And I'm like, mm -hmm. that's not the language that coaches should be using with impression mm -hmm. sixth grade girls. Um, so just like some of those like general mental awareness things, but overall, like it's I said, 99% of the time, coaches are great, teachers are great, our counselors are phenomenal. So I'm just excited to continue to work with Cathedral. On exactly, and when you said there were no boys, and I hate to give things away, <laughs> Think about the wrestling team and what they're going through cutting weight oh, yeah. and, what's and what's happening. So don't leave boys out of that at all. Definitely. And I'm not saying our coaches for our wrestling team aren't absolutely wonderful. We're in the whole cathedrals with the whole St. Cloud and the Baptist Church. But uh, cut weight and difficult things too where they're starving themselves and a whole bunch of things so it's too bad nobody was there but I just don't think that's a guy thing you know where they're gonna go because I know it's people, girls and guys aren't gonna show up for sure for sure so awesome thank you so much for sharing I'm, I want to bounce over to Shelly Shelly what is your question thank you for being here by the way Oh, no problem. Um, you mentioned that the top questions from the students were, um, how do I tell my parents that I would like to seek counseling or return to counseling? Mm -hmm. And then also, how do I address those with my friends? And I was just wondering if you could share what some of the information they were provided was. And if that was on the attachments, I apologize. I have not had a chance to review them yet. It's so okay. I was just wondering what kind of information they were given. Yep, great question, Shelly. And it is on the attachment, so you can always circle back to that, but we'd love to address that yeah. here. Okay. I wanna take it away. And we did provide a link in it as well. So there is, we only have a few bullet points, but we provided more. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, we kept it fairly, fairly short. Um, we did, like Rachel said, we provided a resources, but um, we said, like, explain what you're struggling with and say you want help. And we give an example of how to do that. So um, the example we have listed here is I'm really struggling with anxiety. I can't concentrate because I'm nervous and uncomfortable at school. I would like to talk to a professional who can help. Um, so that was the example that we had listed for them. And then on the other side of that, too, I think it can be really hard. Um, you can create again somewhere else. Yeah, we do in a different way. Um, but I was gonna say, I think another side of that piece too is maybe initiating conversations with your kids if you think they're struggling, or even just to let them know that like, hey, you can always come to me about this. Um, because I think sometimes, I mean, I'm not very far from my teen years, um, mm -hmm. and I know like this, <laughs> like sometimes bringing things to your parents when you don't necessarily know, like, are they going to be okay with it? How are they going to feel about it? That can be really hard, too. So I think, um, like, yes, we gave way to <coughs> we bring it up to trusted adults, um, but to, I think, opening the door to that conversation with your kids can be really impactful. Another thing we talked about uh, was if there is someone that you do feel more comfortable bringing a concern to is asking if they can tag along to the conversation. Mm -hmm. um, like we mentioned, like if you have a really close friend that would be in the room with you just when you start the conversation with your parents or a coach, if you want to ask them for advice on like how to start that conversation, mm -hmm. um, because the students know who they trust with some of these different conversation starters and just getting like talking to us who they only see once now <laughs> um we are not the people that know them and know like where they're coming from the most and so 
um, having those conversations with those people first and then bringing it is another thing we talked about, um, at least in the session with the softball girls that uh, I was at. So, And we do have a few areas on our question sheet that address, like, how do you bring up to a friend that you're concerned about their mental health is on there? And then how do you ask your parents to start therapy? We have it on there twice and answer it two different ways. Um, so... I, I think that briefly answers your question, Shelly. Awesome. Christine. Yes, thank you so much. Yes, thank you. And my daughter is one of the softball girls. So mm -hmm. I'm interested to look at that a little bit closer. But yeah. I was definitely interested in how kind of that peer to peer interaction looks like. I think that's something really heavy for mm -hmm. the person who knows something's going on. Yeah. And um, so I was just curious if they were given any information to kind of how do you, how does, yeah. You know, student A knows something about student B. What does student A do? Do they mm -hmm. talk to the school counselor, to their own parent, the other person's parent, another friend? Mm -hmm. Just kind of some, because I think that would be a very heavy weight to bear mm -hmm. to yeah. have that knowledge. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah, we had, there were some, because we, one of the biggest things that we recommended is like, if you notice something serious, like go to a trusted adult, please. Um, but we did have like some questions that were like, okay, but how do I approach this if I don't necessarily want to go to an adult first? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so we did talk about some ways to have those conversations with friends mm -hmm. to just approach it from like a place of concern and just um, care for XYZ friend. Um, but then we also did not like if you do notice something serious, if you are really concerned about somebody like you should go to an adult so and I really liked what both Amy and Chloe said and even if you think your child's like like your child being like when I'm stressed I just tell myself not to be stressed like <laughs> you you might have a child who's just like I I don't this is not really a concern but even like you opening that door and being like hey if you ever have anything mental health related I am here mm -hmm. to support you and talk to you like I'm not saying you have anything going on. I'm not assuming that in you, but I just want you to know that I care about you and I'm always here if you need to talk to me or you want to talk to a professional. Um, I really liked what Chloe started with. So um, I think we answered that question. Christina in person has a question, then we'll go to Ryan and Christina. Thank you. So I my question might not be pertaining to that group that was there and the yeah. types of questions that were raised. But I, my topic that I wanted to bring up was social media. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we talked, I think Annie brought up the idea of authenticity. Mm -hmm. And Amy, you talked about the fact that, you know, when you are maybe looking at something or your friend hasn't called you and so forth, your mind goes towards, you know, I grew up in an environment where I was a teenager and there was no social media because mm -hmm. I'm that old. And I am just concerned. More particular, and I shouldn't say this, maybe my daughter is in my forms, as to how they feel when they see all of these images, mm -hmm. right, on social media. And how do we start to talk about the fact that there's reality mm -hmm. and there's this facade? But the whole idea, I mean, we've all done it. We've mm -hmm. seen pictures of our friends going to Florida. Oh my God, I've got FOMO. Why am I not in Florida? Yeah. <laughs> so, for a teen, I mean, my yeah. daughter, mm -hmm. and I heard her the other day just talking, oh, um, you know, one of her friends was on the chat. I bet she's going to be upset that she didn't. And already I thought, yeah, they're already starting to feel that I'm not part of it. I'm not, and I'm yeah. not, it might not even be a real feeling yet, but as you get older, mm -hmm. the images, mm -hmm. the discussion groups, the little sidelines, the all of that, when do we start to talk about reality, authentic? friendship you know all yeah. that stuff mm -hmm. so what is that a topic that you guys cover yeah, for sure yeah. <laughs> great question so once again question was about social media authentic real versus in real life in our eating disorder group they did bring up like I don't look like people on social media or something along those lines in terms of like body shape mm -hmm. um, I think my first thought is just really reinforcing with your child chills friend 
positive language about body image, that's a huge one. Your children learn from you. So if you're like, I feel fat I today, feel your child, even though you didn't say you feel like you're fat today, you being like, I feel fat or talking about food in a negative way, they are little sponges. They just soak all of that in. And so just being really mindful of like how you talk about your friends, about your friends on social media and stuff like that. And then just reminding your children, like, remember, photos are edited. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're using AI now to make like model commercials. So like most of what you see on social media is just either a sliver of reality or completely made up entirely. So just really reinforcing that. Yeah. Um, Chloe, did you have to yeah. I did, yeah. Um, I was going to mention too, because like I was just hitting my years or <coughs> when Instagram started to really like grow up. And so I think like we also come from like the first generation that like really is dealing with the impact that obviously it's affecting like the younger generations now. Um, but like now we're at a point where we know a lot more about it, about the topic mm -hmm. of the and how it can um, raise rates of anxiety, depression. Mm -hmm. Like we do know that that is a big contributor. And so like personally, I mean, everybody's different. Everybody's parenting style is different, but having those conversations as early as possible with your kids, I think is really important. Mm -hmm. um, and like even setting boundaries with social media platforms if you want to. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Yeah, one thing to add, you mentioned your daughter's 10. Um, that is right around that age range where social um, pressures and wanting to fit in really start coming mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. So around, I would think it's like eight to 12 years old is when um, that starts to come in a lot. And one thing that I know that has been really helpful um, in what I share is like um, suggesting, especially with social media, is suggesting finding different people who are positive influences mm -hmm. and suggesting they follow them. Mm -hmm. The more you like, we know algorithms. Mm -hmm. um, when you interact with positive pages, that gives you more of those positive mm -hmm. things. And so um, I always like to suggest different um, pages that make me feel positive things. Mm -hmm. And then also, if you're noticing um, negative pages that bring up negative things in your children and your students, um, like finding alternatives. Mm -hmm. Because there are a lot of great pages that have a lot of great content, which also bring in a lot of negative feelings for students. And mm -hmm. I think just emphasizing that if a page is giving you these negative feelings, these doubts, making you wanna change things about your beautiful self, mm -hmm. that maybe that's not the page and finding an alternative where they give you the good information, but also make you feel positive. Um, so that's where I would kind of go with that. No, I'm not going to add you on any social platform. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But they yeah. all chat. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And the idea that someone's left out mm -hmm. is one of the, oh, no, they weren't here, or are they going to be sad that they're not here? They're missing out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's my, hmm. Yeah. When I was little, you didn't know that you weren't missing right. out because you didn't know that no one, right? right? Yeah. Okay. It's a very different dynamic. Yeah, for sure. And unfortunately, bullying and oh. exclusion is is something that always has been and is something that always will be. We That is being an adolescent and um, younger transitioning from childhood to adolescence, they're going through a lot and there will always be that conflict. Um, just making sure if you see anything in your children's friend group to speak up, go to the school counselor, go to a teacher, talk to the other friends, um, mirror that behavior that you hope your children will see as well. And that also goes for talking about your own mental health. Um, students feel a lot more comfortable talking to people. They know that in some capacity, you've also dealt with something in some regard. You're their parents. They probably think you're perfect and amazing and you hold up the world and you <laughs> get them to <laughs> <laughs> like, You are still their biggest advocate, their biggest supporter. And to also know that like, you are not 
perfect and they probably already know that probably get fights they're teenagers <laughs> but to also just like I struggle with anxiety stuff like that um that opens the door to students feeling more comfortable to also talk about their own mental health so mm -hmm. great yeah. answers friends we're gonna move on Ryan you've had your hand up for a while how what is your question yeah thank, thank you my name's Ryan I have, my daughter is an eighth grader um and I, you've answered some of the the questions I have, I think, but I, I think um, I, in reviewing the questions that were asked by the students, I'm impressed at, uh, I would say, the depth, and then I also think some of the probably seriousness of that, the, the eating disorder theme really jumped out at me and was concerning that it was a repeat through, throughout the questions, and, and I don't know if that's representative of the group you were connecting with or more broadly, but I think... Um, my question is around helping these kids navigate adolescence. It's it's certainly a different landscape than we're used to and terrifies me for the same reasons that we just talked about in their social media and this 24 seven connectedness. We see that um, if you're familiar with the, the Minnesota student survey that many of us probably took as we, if you lived in Minnesota throughout the years, we're seeing this general increase in distress happening mm -hmm. throughout all ages. If it's bullying, the rates of mental health issues, um, a lot of the same things that you, you saw in the survey that you did. So, so I think what my question is, is what is Cathedral going to do or what are your thoughts about how we help empower parents to talk to their kids about these things? Because I think you have a really engaged group of parents here listening. And I think within our community, and I think what we sometimes need is how do I start this discussion with my child, whether it's about an eating disorder or suicide, or how do I ask them about, hey, how did this go at school? This thing came up. So I think if you have examples or ideas about some tangible things we can get to parents, that would be really helpful for them to approach these things with their kids. Yeah, awesome. Great question, Ryan. Um, and once again, thank you all parents for being here and for showing up for us and also mostly your kids mm -hmm. and just being willing to start this conversation because it's not a light conversation. It ranges from dealing with stress, which you'll see in the slideshow. Adolescents, teenagers deal with more stress than adults do um, based on studies that have been done. So it ranges from stress all the way to the other end of things with suicide and eating disorders. And eating disorders, specifically anorexia, is one of the leading causes of adolescent deaths. So it is a very heavy conversation and one that your students also didn't shy away from having and being concerned for themselves and their classmates mm -hmm. for as like hard as that probably is to hear as a parent. Um, they really do care and they want to seek help. And so um, your question is like kind of what is, what are our thoughts? What will Cathedral do? I know Cathedral plans to take additional more, more mental health steps. It's in our like three to five year plan is to continue to build the counseling program and the mental health resources. In our follow-up email to all of you, um, I sent out another email. Yep, uh, Anne asked, how do you get access to the handbooks? Um, Merit Ortega, who is on this call, sent out an email to the parents, a part of parent council. Was it all parents? Okay, I think it was all parents, but we can push that out again. And hi, Marin. It was, yeah, it was all parents that got the email um, yesterday and then last week too. So your email is in that and people can certainly email you. But um, Thank you, Marin. So we will send it out again and we'll attach all the same attachments. We can also, we kind of oscillated back and forth on if we attach the positive reframing or like work that we did with your students we'll attach that one that wasn't attached the first time but we'll attach it this next time and we'll also send out some additional resources of like um the national institute of mental health like how to talk to your adolescent about mental health mm -hmm. how to ask questions about suicide or, or if you think your child self-harming so we'll send out more resources in a follow-up email as well but yeah um, I hope to continue having these conversations next school year as well, more regularly with the school counselors through my internship, because it's nice to know that not only are you here supporting your children, but also you have parental support here too. There are parents in the room and parents here on Zoom. You are not alone in your struggles and your child is not alone in theirs either. So there's lots of support here. Mary. Yeah, I was just gonna just, offer an answer to from a parent's side 
from for Ryan. I feel like you don't need excuses or reasons or there's never it doesn't have to be the perfect time to talk to our kids about this. So I mean just the fact that we're all sitting in on this meeting today and there was a mental health conversation and um and the students probably know that parents were going to be hearing about it because they certainly know that Rachel and these other two were already talking to them in the last previous weeks. I think tonight is like the perfect opportunity. We sat in on this meeting that Cathedral had and there was discussion about a lot of the stuff that kids at Cathedral are dealing with. What do you what do you hear? Do you know of people who are struggling? Have you had anything that you've been struggling with lately? Just I mean, there really doesn't have to be the perfect moment. I don't think there ever is, but tonight would be a good opportunity since we're all sitting here. It's a reason to ask them. So I love that. Yeah. I mean, and there's no perfect way to approach a conversation either. Um I give like a few tips or a few pointers about like how to potentially like open up the conversation. But I really like what Eric said. Um I think one like one big thing like when I was answering some of these questions that I noticed was like um focusing on observable behaviors during your kids. So I noticed this specifically and I'm wondering XYZ um because it can be I don't know. You don't necessarily always want to make assumptions um, because, accusatory. yeah, accusatory. accusatory. You don't want to sound accusatory, um, especially because maybe they're not struggling with X, Y, Z thing or they're not ready to talk about it. Um, and so I think making that one, making that clear is like, you don't have to talk to me about this, but I'm here for you if you do. Um, or I don't know if you're like just being honest saying I don't know if you're struggling with xyz thing but if you are if there is something you ever want to talk to me about like please know I'm here I'm here to support you I'm not going to judge you or look down upon you because um, of any mental health problem and so I think just as long as you're coming from a place of compassion and care for your kid like yes it might be uncomfortable to have the conversation with them um but opening the door mm -hmm. and using some of those techniques to do so i think could be really beneficial so mm -hmm. th thank you for that this is ryan again i just want to add i think the, the people in the room are probably your folks who are are doing that work i think there's a tremendous amount of stigma associated with mental health stuff and i think that's what i'm thinking about how do we help uh support the people who don't know how to ask the question and how do we get in front of those yeah those parents or guardians or whoever else are involved in these kids lives to help support that so thank you for sure and we had a comment here in person i just something i learned at mom conference when my kids were little and this is something my kids are older now but um and not that you can't start it older but mm -hmm. when they were little um we had this back and forth journal that we put under pillows mm -hmm. at night oh, oh. and kids will often write things that they won't speak Yes. And so that. if you can start young where you just write about anything, like today was a great day and this is why, or, and here's a question I have for you. And it could be a fun question. And then they answer it back when they would like to and shove the little journal under your pillow and you can just go back and forth. And as you build that trust, um, oh, I was uh, super surprised. One of my son's very first things was a playground issue in like fourth grade like mm -hmm. this is what's happening on the playground what do you think we could do and then I write back my answer and um it's just a way to communicate that maybe feels a lot safer for them at first um and so if you, the younger you can start it obviously the more trust you can build up and then after that sometimes you don't even need that anymore <laughs> I love that. I think but I think it's so much for sure. Yeah, it's a concrete, it's a concrete way yeah. to catch up in that communication. That. Wow, thank you for sharing. Yeah, yeah. Ryan, did you have something to add? I thought I heard you. Maybe not. Maybe not. Oh, um, I was going to add to what you had said, Ryan, um, because you said, like, you think, yes, um, the people here are the people who are having these hard conversations mm -hmm. most likely um but it's reaching the parents who this is more uncomfortable for, um and how we do that and i think 
one that's a very complicated question and so like we don't have the perfect answer um but i think like the there is a lot of stigma and so i think yes reaching as many parents as possible is important but i think unfortunately like, there's always going to be parents who are necessarily going to be open to it but i think the more that like cathedral promotes it and like even just sending out resources to parents i think like even them, you know, getting some of these things and being able to um, see some of this stuff can probably help. I don't know if you have anything to add to that. Yeah, I think the last thing I was going to add to that is just on the social media side, I liked what Amy said with like following and surrounding yourself with positive influencers or positive voices. Occasionally, if you didn't know, I run Cathedral Social Media context um but occasionally like monthly I try to be like how can we pray for you this week or this month and I will have students because all the students know who I am they see me in their classrooms they see me on the side of the football field or wherever and so they will send like can you please pray for me I'm dealing with a lot of anxiety today so it just goes with like also just like opening that door and being like there are people who care for you virtually on social media or in person, parents, teachers, coaches, school counselors, principals, stuff like that. It just comes back to like being consistent, like what you talked about with the the journal under the pillow, just always showing up authentically and trying to mirror that as well. And then finding people who also voice that as well. And the students also know my personal story with mental health or some of them do, it's the older ones. Um, so they also tend to feel more comfortable like coming to me and asking me very specific questions. That was one of the things during the eating disorder conversation that there were a lot more like very specific being a division one athlete eating disorder conversations that we had as well. Did you have something to add? Yeah, um, I just kind of, as we're closing off towards the end here, I did want to just throw it out there. Like we obviously are not parents um, and you yes. all know your children the best. <laughs> Um, we can give you all the information we've learned from classes and from textbooks and from research and um, like we know things, but you also, you are the parents and you, um, yeah, you know your kids best. And if there's anything we can share with you is that the more we continue to talk about and um, discuss mental health in every aspect of our life, the more it, it transcends across different communities. Um, and so the more you're, like, if we're talking about reaching people who don't talk about it as much, the more we talk about it and the more we normalize the conversation, the more it will be more comfortable for other people who maybe aren't in the conversation yet. And so, well, um, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, and it goes to, like, not just with your children, like, near this with your friends. I am going on a trip with some girlfriends in June, and one of the questions that last night, and I was like, okay, just want to do like a quick mental health check and like, how's everybody feeling about the trip? And of course, that comes from like, I'm a baby counselor in training, but also it just comes from like, genuinely always wanting to make sure like, the conversation is there, the doors are open with students, with my friends, with new people. Um, and just knowing that like, the more you talk about it, Amy said it so well. I literally can't say it better. Yeah, so I just can't talk either. about it in all aspects of your life and it will get more. <laughs> we have like one more minute. Are there any final questions? And you will include our email so you can always reach out to us as well. Um, but once again, thank you all so much for showing up digitally and in person. Mm -hmm. Your students are you. and your your support and your ability to just want to start to advocate for mental health is the hardest step. Mm -hmm. So just you being here is amazing and we are here to help in any way that we can. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Right. Have a nice day, everyone. Bye. Like, I'm just, just finished. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm hot. Go ahead.